In this guide, I'm going to show how to set up a Laravel application using Herd. This is going to quickly set you up with a local development environment running Nginx as a web server with PHP, as well as all of the PHP modules you'll need to run a Laravel application. It's also going to have Composer for dependency management built into it. The only thing it doesn't have is a database system, so we're going to be pairing this with DB Engine to get a MySQL database set up for our application. So with those goals in mind, the first thing you want to do is download these two pieces of software. You can get heard from herd.laravel.com. Just click the download button, get it installed like you would any other software on your Mac computer. And then once it's installed and running, you should see the herd icon in your menu bar. Similarly, you want to download DB Engine. You can get this from dbengine.com. Click the download button, get that set up. In my case, you can see I've already got it running. So uh, we'll be ready to work with that when we need it. With your software installed, the first thing we're going to do is within herd, we want to find our settings. So I'm just going to click the little H icon, go to settings. And then I want to start off in the general tab. And note here, you have a list of herd paths. Any Laravel applications you put in one of the directories listed here will automatically be configured as a site via herd. Uh, for example, you can see one of the default paths should be in your home directory under this directory called herd. So in this demonstration, I'm going to create a new Laravel application in that directory. Uh, if you want to work in a different directory, let's say you already have a sites directory somewhere in your computer, you want to use that, you could just add that as another directory that herd is going to be looking for sites. Uh, but in my case, I am going to go in this default herd directory. So let me switch gears over to command line and I'm going to move into that directory. I can use the tilde forward slash uh, shortcut, which is a shortcut to your home directory. And we're going to go into the herd directory. Within here, we're going to generate a new Laravel application using the command Laravel new. Laravel is a command line utility that came installed as part of herd. So you should have access to it. And at the end of this command, we just want to give our application a name. You can call it whatever you want. In my case, I'm just going to call it demo. Upon running this command, it's going to ask you a few setup questions. The first question is, would you like to install a starter kit? Your options here are no starter kit, or you could choose Breeze or Jetstream. Uh, both of these are additional utilities you can add to your Laravel application that help with things like user management, authentication. Uh, you can read more about them on the Laravel site. If you have experience with them and you know you want to start your application with that, you can choose that. Uh, we're going to keep things simple for this example. I'm going to say no starter kit. This is something you could always add later if you wanted to. All right, so I'm going to leave it as a default no starter kit and hit enter. Next, it's going to ask you to choose a testing framework. Testing frameworks provide extra utilities for writing tests within your code. Tests are written to make sure your code is doing what you expect it to do, quality assurance over time, that sort of thing. Uh, if you have a preference of PHP unit versus pest, you can choose that here. If you don't have any experience with either of these, just leave it as the default PHP unit. Uh, just like the starter kit, this is something you could always change later. So I'm going to hit enter. Next, if you want to use Git version control on this project, you would choose yes here. So it'll initialize a Git repository for you. In my case, this is a demo. I'm going to be deleting it after. So I'm just going to leave this as no and hit enter for the next step. And that's the end of the setup questions. You can see now it's beginning the installation process. So it's going to download all the uh, external dependencies of your Laravel application and do all the initial setup. So I'll give this a moment to complete. And that is finished. So if we take a look at our directory contents, we should see a new directory named after the application we just created. So here's my demo application. I do have some other sites and uh, applications that already exist in my herd directory. Uh, in your case, if you're just starting out with herd, this is probably the only directory that you're going to see. Now with that there, let's switch back to herd. And I'm going to go over to the Sites tab, and it's going to refresh, and it should detect the new directory you added and automatically generate a URL for it. So you can see it did that here. It took the name of the directory, which was demo. It gave it a .test extension. Every site that's running via herd is going to have this .test extension. You could see the path where that application exists. You have the option if you want to access the site via HTTPS. You can click this little icon. I'm going to go ahead and do that. It is going to ask for my computer's password, so I'll type that in. And you can see it refreshed, and now the URL is prefixed with HTTPS. Uh, if you want, you could adjust what version of PHP this site is running on. In my case, I only see the option for 8.2 here. But if I went into my herd settings and I go over to PHP, I have the option to install other versions, uh, which might be something you want to do if, let's say, you were working with an existing Laravel application that you're moving into herd and it was running on an older version of PHP and you want to be consistent with that, uh, you could adjust that here as needed. But in this case, I'm going to leave it as the default of 8.2. All right, so it set up everything for me. We're ready to test this application in the browser. So if we click this little icon here under Actions, it should open up my browser. 
open up HTTPS demo.test and perfect, there's the welcome splash screen we see with every new Laravel application. So with our application set up, let's turn our attention to the database. I'm gonna bring up DB Engine. And if this is your first time working with DB Engine, you shouldn't see any existing services. In my case, I already have a MySQL service just because I've been using this program. But let's imagine that didn't exist there. Uh, what I would wanna do is create a new service and I'll do that by clicking this little plus icon. And for the service type, I'm gonna choose MySQL for a MySQL database system. And then I'll give it a name. Um, and you could just call it MySQL in my case, cause I do have an existing service already called MySQL. I'm just gonna call it MySQL2. You could leave all these other options as the default and just go ahead and click create and then start that service. And with that service started, we now want to uh, confirm that our application is able to uh, interact with this database server. And the way we can do that, if we go back to command line, when we move into my application directory, and then within the application, I'm gonna run the command php artisan migrate. Uh, now, if you are not familiar with Laravel's migration system, uh, basically it's utilities built into your Laravel application that allows you to write code that describes the structure of your database tables. And when you run your migrations, it's gonna build those tables based on those instructions. Now, every Laravel application comes with some default migrations for setting things up like your user table. So we're gonna to attempt to run our migration. And if it's able to successfully connect to our database and run those migrations, we know that our application is able to communicate with the database server we just set up. So let's try this out, I'm gonna run it. The first thing it says is that uh, the database for this application does not yet exist. Would we like to create it? And I'm gonna say yes. And perfect, you can see it actually ran my migrations. It created the default tables. Like I said, there's a users table. There's some other uh, behind the scenes tables as well that your application might end up using. Now, if you try to run your migrations and you don't see this output, you see some sort of errors about your connection, it means you need to go into your database settings and make some adjustments to be able to connect to the database server. Now, I didn't have to make those adjustments because it just so happens that the default settings that Laravel applications come with are the exact settings we need for connecting to a MySQL database via DB Engine. But let's say that wasn't the case. Where do we find these settings? What do we need to change them to? Well, where we're gonna find them is in the root of our application, there's gonna be a file called .env. This is your environment file. You can see it here. Uh, and this is gonna contain any environment level configurations, including your database configurations. Uh, so let's take a look at this file. I'm just gonna use the concatenate command or cat for short to output the contents of this file. And then I'm gonna scroll up and look for my database related configuration. So everything prefixed with db underscore. So you can see the default connection type is MySQL. Uh, here is the default host address that it's gonna be attempting to connect over. Uh, 127001 is a very common local IP address used on development servers. And that is the IP address in which DB Engine sets up our MySQL service. Similarly, the default port is 3306. The database name in my case is demo. And where it came up with this is when we initialized the Laravel application, remember I said Laravel new and I gave it a name, I called it demo. Well, based on that, it inferred that I wanted the same database name to match that application. So it pre-filled it with that. And it also pre-filled the username and password using defaults of root for the username and just empty for password. And those happen to be the username and password that the uh, DB Engine MySQL database service is expecting. So out of the box, no changes necessary here to work with DB Engine, but I did just wanna draw your attention to these settings in the event that you're having any sort of connection issues. Uh, this would be the first place you would wanna check and just make sure all the credentials and information plugged in here is uh, as expected. Uh, and with that, that completes the setup process of creating a new Laravel application, running it via Herd, getting it set up with a MySQL database running on DB Engine. Of course, this is just the start of your development process. At this point, you would want to start to customize this application, write code to interact with that database, all of that good stuff. And if you're new to Laravel and looking for a place to get started, check out my series Laravel in a Nutshell. I'll include a link in the description below. That's a good place to get started to wrap your head around the entire Laravel system. Uh, and really build a strong foundation to begin your development journey.